Okay guys, so this is going to be my review of Vertigo Comics Lost Boys by Tim Seeley. This is yet again another comic that was uh, given to us by our good friend uh, Mount Vernon Kid. Chris, thank you once again for this contribution. And yeah, so this comic is the first six issues of Tim Seeley's The Lost Boys. Now Tim Seeley has been notably doing a lot for DC. Um, he has also been notably best known for doing horror. Of course, his big claim to fame for horror, as well as in comics, is the horror series called Hack Slash, which I'm a huge fan of. So having Tim Seeley on the on a Lost Boys comic seems like a good idea, and the artwork is fine. This is now an official in-canon sequel to uh, the Lost Boys film, the original 1987 film, um, and that's really cool. I really dig how that's, you know, how it's put up. In fact, it's actually set, like, only a few short weeks after the events of... Actually, no, it's set up a month or two after the original film. So the story is, is that the Frog Brothers, along with Sam and Michael, are, you know, trying to readjust to life after defeating Max and, and uh, David in the original film. And, date you know, Michael now is dating Star, he's um, trying to adjust to a life with a job, and, uh, yeah, they're just trying to get, uh, go on. But, along, but however, a new vampire uh, pack has shown up, known as the Blood Bells, who are an all-female vampire crew, who are uh, essentially trying to uh, dig underground for under Santa Clara, the uh, murder capital of the world, and essentially dig it out and find the place called Sebulba, which is actually home of the Vampire Mothers who are the original, like in this continuity, they are vampires who essentially um, birthed uh, all vampires. They are essentially vampires who are... Yeah, they, they're pretty much like the first vampires. So anyway, the Blood Bells are really interesting. They're a nice little antagonist. And we have the added... Um, the added moment of David being resurrected, which they don't really go into full detail of showing David because they even mentioned, yeah, you exploded. You fucking exploded in, in there and you're right as rain. And they don't really say how they met the blood bells brought David back. I mean, they use, they say they use the blood of the, um, the blood of the mothers to bring him back, but they don't really say how you come back from being exploded. You don't, they don't really go too deep into it. And honestly, this comic, while it had all the moments as, like, it's a cool sequel to The Lost Boys, it, you know, it has a lot of, you know, cool references to the film, you know, it started off good, but man, did this thing fall apart fast. Because in a six-issue book, they try to do too much in way too soon. I understand that this is an ongoing, but yeah, this felt like... You know, if you hadn't told me, you know, if you hadn't told me this was an o this wasn't an ongoing, then I wouldn't have believed you because yeah, this feels more like a rushed miniseries. And I feel like this was originally meant to be a miniseries until they're like, oh yeah, you got an ongoing. And I don't know if Volume Two's out yet because Tim Seeley is on a lot, you know, at DC. He is doing a lot for DC, and I think he's doing stuff for Marvel too. So I do like the story of how it kind of uh, addresses the fact that Michael and Sam are pretty much like, yeah, we killed a vampire, but we still don't know how it works. Um, we also, you know, it also shows a lot of the Blood Bells who don't feel more like, even David feels, per, you know, useless in this story. Like, they try to build up David's resurrection, but like, no one's like, oh shit, David's around. And, you know, David's back. And no one really cares like no like it doesn't feel like there's no real impact to david being resurrected in the book like it does like it doesn't feel like much um it's also kind of sad because they try to you know shoehorn all this stuff in here like the mother of vamp you know the vampire mothers they also try to shoehorn all of this and it all just feels really superfluous because i feel like the comic end like ended with the whole mother of vampire story with just one, mo you know, in one issue, like they get, re they get, they get um, awakened, and then in the same issue they die. It's that's the problem is that like there could have been so much more you could have done because this is an ongoing that you could have spread this out. Like oh shit, the you know the first vampires are walking among mankind, and now the Frog Brothers are the last slayers to hunt them down. We also have 
um, the true believer, who is most of you guys would know best as shirtless sax guy. It turns out shirtless sa shirtless sax guy is a vampire slayer, and he and David have an excellent fight. They have like a really cool um, fight in here. Um, he's actually, if you if you know your Helsing, um, true the true believer, whose real name is Nico. Uh, actually, they have a pretty boss fight in the story. They actually have a pretty boss fight in... I mean, they actually... Yeah, him and David have a boss fight. But even then, like, it feels like you could have done more... Without spoiling anything, they could have done more with Shirtless Sax Guy. But again, I feel like this was meant to be... Like, this was originally conceived as a miniseries, and then they, like... No, 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 let's make it an ongoing. Let's let's make it an ongoing. Hence why they, I feel like a lot, of co a lot of the stuff in here... Just feels like an like it just got rush, uh, rushed too quickly. I feel like if Seely had known that this wasn't going to be an ongoing, I feel like he would have done more with the comics. Because aside with something at David at the end, like it just feels like all wasted potential. Like it all just feels like wasted uh, potential in this comic. Um, the artwork's fine. Um, the villains themselves don't feel very fleshed out. Even the main, ca um, the only real um, fleshed out stuff is with Star and Michael. Um, we actually get more of a backstory with Star in that she was actually sent to infiltrate by the Blood Bells this gr um, Max's group, and I was like, "Oh, that's really cool." Um, you know, you know, actually building more into the mythology of the vampires of this universe—that's really cool. But other than that, like, I just feel like a lot of this comic just comes off as wasted potential. So unfortunately, we have that. Anyway, so you guys tell uh, tell me in the comments below if you've read. Um, Lost Boys, The Lost Girl. Uh, comment below, let us know here on Universe what do you think of it. If you're new here, remember to Hulk smash that subscribe button and be a part of Earth's Mightiest Subscribers. Um, hope you all enjoyed this review. If you um, read it, tell us what you thought of it. And once again, I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the Universe.